Hello and welcome to Dell's Gaming. You join me here in the designer for From the Depths version 1.621. And we're going to do a little build. It's become a, um, I've been saying about some types of ships to build them for this new um, uh, version of the game. And we're going to get around to it. So this is going to be a build around the deep sea vessels. DSVs. So deep sea vessels, because we've got some serious amounts of, if I get to just the little bit where I can see down, some serious height underneath now. There's, there's various mount, almost mountainous and deep areas under the sea. Um, you can see to, to navigate around and through. Whoops, a little bit tricky there. So um, it's, it's quite a complex little vehicle. It's not as easy as air, air vehicles. In some ways it's easier, in some ways it's more difficult. So I want to come up with a new style of vehicle that's under the sea and not just um, modify the existing subs. That's just far too easy. I'm going to design a new type of sub, I think, uh, especially for this. I say new type, a new style for us. So um, without ado, a couple of the key factors um, when designing a ship for like we're going to design now is uh, first first of all we need to make sure that it actually goes under the water um, naturally um, is better rather than being forced under um, one of the problems you've got is navigation um, when we're going down deep and uh, we didn't ever think about the depth in it I'll, I'll talk about it in a second uh, you need to be able to quickly <coughs> raise up to avoid obstacles that are in the way i.e the sea floor which is very jagged it's not a very smooth sea floor in most places uh, so uh, most of the time you're going to have to have a fair bit of um, agility in the vertical plane quite simply um, otherwise you're going to start having some problems and it will um, yeah you'll you'll, you'll find you're ramming into the, the sea floor all the time which is definitely not the uh, intention and the idea of having a deep sea uh, deep sea vessel so um, as far as depth goes uh, how deep are we gonna go now of the system itself the the the, um, the sea itself can go down to about uh, 500 meters but having a look around um, I'm seeing that most most places under the water are between um, 400 and 200 with some some areas going into that and close to that 500 and and some shallow areas going near the hundred but most are between the the two to to uh, 400 so we're going to try and aim at making a vessel that goes around the 300 uh, meters depth um, with the possibility, you know, would that be the aim for this first vessel? Maybe some other larger ones, we might try and make them go to 400 if it's available. Uh, right, problems uh, we're going to come across at these depths are, as I say, you've got to be able to um, move your ship you know, horizontally to pitch up. If there's something in front of you, we have to pitch up. If, if the sea floor's coming up on us, below we need to be able to pitch up to get above that um, uh, I don't know if it, we can see any down here most probably won't be able to see some but uh, you'll see that some of the the water levels pitch up fairly sharply um, what this comes down the other the other side with it is if we use the, we need to control the pitch angle that's the the rate of climb at that same time if we allow it to go too much just with the hydrofoils it could actually loop under the water there's actually enough room under the sea in some of the deep areas to do a, a loop with a submarine um, which in the end puts it on its back and makes it useless so we do have to control we've got to get a balance um, between being able to adjust to the sea floor and not do loops, quite simply. The other area that is um, important is weaponry. Uh, being so deep under the water, some of our normal weaponry acts a little different, um, acts differently. 
Um, we've got various weapons that can be used. Um, I won't go into lasers. Lasers are simplistic uh, in that they will just work. They are point and shoot. They will get their armor piercing value reduced, but there's no real challenge in them. You just put a laser in there, put it on a turret, and it will work. Um, that's fairly simplistic. Um, cannons have... Um, you would need to make them very high armor piercing. Uh, the water has a big effect on the velocity and seems to slow it down. And uh, you need to make slightly more armor piercing shells and a very high velocity shells rather than trying to make them very um, uh, overly large or um, uh, not overly large, um, overly HE. So you would want high gauge long barrel so again it's going to be fairly um big guns the guns will have to be quite some size to uh, at these deep depths to get out of the water um to if you wanted to for instance to attack a uh, a flying vehicle which could be up six seven hundred meters up now with the new ranges in height um, but we say 500 meters up you might have to go a thousand meters and 500 of that meters could be through water. So you'll need a pretty damn big gun to shoot upwards. Um, and I say, very high armor piercing. Finally, missiles. Uh, we'll go through missiles, which is the one I'm gonna choose and we're gonna use in the sub here. Missiles have to surface um, before they can be used. Um, that's not strictly true, because obviously if you use torpedoes, Torpedoes don't need to surface, and that's ideal for any vessel which is uh, on the surface. So torpedoes will be the, the uh, weapon of choice for any surface vessel, uh, attacking a surface vessel. Um, the other one is aircraft. If I've got to attack aircraft, my missile has to go above the water before it can fire. Um, using ejectors and uh, on the missile, even with four ejectors, they they stop working and stop ejecting the missile out of the water effectively at about 80, 75, 80 meters. Uh, you can sometimes, and also um, you can get them to work at 100 meters, but only for small missiles. Uh, that's the other one. The bigger the missile, the slow, longer it takes to surface, and the less height it will get when it pops out. Um, when we're talking down at 300 meters, we're looking at a missile um, taking about between 20 to 30 seconds to surface before it even hits the surface. So from firing point without any ejectors, it's going to take you know 20 might take 20, 20, 30 seconds for it to go up, depending on its size. Um, also, during that ascent, it's got very little upward velocity and won't pop out of the water. Um, in this case, what I have, personally, I've done a fair bit of testing, but it was really boring, so I didn't put a video on it. But basically, uh, four, four and five block missiles seem to be ideal and work well. When you start going above that sort of size, they become very uh, difficult to get them to reliably breach the sur water surface and then continue up onto, into the air. Um, because of this delay in surfacing which we'll see when we do the missile testing and i'll show you later we have to put a delay on the um first thruster to ensure that it doesn't try and just thrust whilst it's still underwater it's got to wait until it's just about on the surface and then start thrusting um, this will affect the range so the uh, further away um sorry if you if you set that value too low it will use all of its thrust time whilst under the water and you'll get no range with your missile if you set it too long it will reach the water the engine it will reach the surface of the water the engine's not turned on yet and therefore it will just flop into the water and not take off um, i found that the except on a few cases it's more reliable to ensure that the engine is running before it breaches the surface there is a few other little sneaky bits I've found which have been useful, which we'll go into. So, anyway, let's go to our ship. Now, uh, the ship. Uh, I've, I've created this as a baseline because it's a starting point. What I've decided so far in my ships, I've created the uh, various shapes. I've created the um, nice 
cylindrical uh, or fairly cylindrical or oval shaped ships which I've mainly used for my standard subs uh, they've fairly been a normal cylindrical type of design I've also created the very wide design which we've used in the um, uh, Ray type of fleet um, and started to use actually in the, the flying ships as well um, so I've come up with a couple of, uh, of designs like that um, so I wanted to do something different so what I was thinking uh, for these vessels because they're demanding to be attacked from the top and not the side I want to try and do a very tall slim design um, I suppose in some ways it's going to be very reminiscent of was it the uh, what was it the um, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word what is the ship from um, uh, from, from Nemo's in in the the, the uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Um, it was a very thin and tall ship um, with a very sharp nose from memory. So I'm going to follow that sort of rough design. I think for the moment we'll have we'll have a few torpedoes at the the front but they won't be our our primary um, so we will do our usual um, basis of working from the offensive weapons first now one big issue is with this we're going for the 300 meters but our vessel could go as high as 150 meters now the difference in its timing on that type of missile is about 12 seconds so it has to be thought about that do we have different missiles for different heights of the ship potentially um, if we set a missile to work at ideally at 300 if you fire that at 150 it will just flop on the surface and not fire at all so you really got to think about do we uh, you, you if you set your missiles to work ideally at one height as soon as you're not at that height your missiles will stop working totally uh, because the water you're in is a little bit deep so we're going to possibly have to create multiple small batteries of missiles here um, that work at different depths of the ship so quite complex actually um, but fun so let's go to our missiles so we're going to make the center of the ship is going to be a little wider than normal and uh, we'll make a few batches of eight missiles we've designed for different heights of the ship um, that's my plan at the moment so we're going to have a a missile system at the, on the front which will be about an eight uh, point missile system so we'll put that there as a as a marking point so that will be um, for about eight block missile system with the controller there so that we'll leave that one there for there for the moment a bit of a gap um, maybe some control blocks here for doing various things right now we're gonna have another batch of eight missile blocks here um, which are um, facing up come on face up there we go so that's going to be our first one and we will make them five high i have got some to work at about um oops, that's not needed about six blocks but they started to become unreliable four was the most reliable um but i found a way of making the five block work really well I, I did find a way of making the six block but it wasn't uh, worth using at that block level at that block count um, which I won't go into now but with, there was there was various reasons it, it just wasn't effective as effective as as it should be um, or as I would want it to be okay so we do that there so that's going to be let's say for the fairly lower um, height um, shooting then we're going to have a couple of a block difference 
where we might put a bit of a, a bit of a firewall in there maybe two block firewall and yeah okay then we'll then we'll uh, maybe some other controls and some ammo barrels etc so we'll, we'll put some uh, another eight block here and then we'll do the same and then put another eight block here so that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna roll so we're gonna have basically i'm thinking three eight blocks each aimed at different heights so the, this one will be aimed at when we're close to the, th the closer to the 300 meter mark this will be closer to the 200 mark and this closer to the 100 mark give or take um you know 50 meters or something so this will work down to 350 this will you know 150 to 250 and this is 50 to 150 so each of them are uh, I don't know about we might I might change that a little bit and have an overlap but we'll see how this goes um, but this is the complexity potentially of these missiles of going this DSV route okay let's just um, mark out these bays because obviously they do have a, a, a an impact now one change we're going to make is how do we make these different missile systems only operate at the height we wish okay because you know they're the current controllers which we'll go to in a second don't really have much in the way of control of of your where your own vessel is they're all worried about where your um where your enemy is not where you are so if we start with this front one so we're going to need a missile controller let's uh, get our our everything pointing the right way so okay missile controller there we go and we might put um i think we'll possibly need an identify friend or foe and a staggered fire on the top um, there we go i want a little bit of a delay on there okay now we would need let's say an ai weapon controller there we go and obviously what we would do on here is if this was going for vessels of a certain distance now one thing that we um we might get find what distance we can and can't get with this but i'm gonna say a thousand meters as a as a maximum range uh just as a starting point we have now obviously we could say that this is designed for um high altitude targets so we're not going to be hitting surface targets let's say this is um for the moment aerial these ones are designed for aerial targets well we'll have a we'll, we'll have a they may well be able to do um uh, other targets but for the moment let's say aerial targets so they're only going to hit target things which are over 20 meters high which is basically all your airships etc we could reduce this down so it's just two so it will attack surface vessels um as well but eh, okay now obviously we can set on here number of blocks and stuff like that but we've got no way of saying oh okay um attack this target don't attack that this target um yeah sorry another target now if i put my ai where's my ai gonna go we're gonna put the ai um that's that there we'll put the ai about here pull the mainframe now normally this would be our this would be our normal whoops our normal ai basis which we'll put in here our left and right card slot oh got to take off the uh Middle line the next bit which is a navel it's got to have a navel and uh, let's say a target prioritization now we could on here we still got no way um, all we could now put on here we could put a transmitter so we just go down the usual process that we would go through um, these are our aim points etc not really going to work for what we want here um, where are we where are we where are we uh, transmitters transmitter I've lost it there we go transmitter now we could put the transmitter on various channels obviously um, and then what we would normally do is put a receiver on here but we've still got no way of saying right our ship is above or below a certain height to be able to turn say whether these missiles should fire 
um, this is also only based upon the enemy so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give each system their own mainframe so now this is connected to the mainframe now it's got the bad point is it's got no at the moment it's, it's fairly dumb it's got no target prioritization or other factors it is just a mainframe um, so the target it goes for is going to be very default very little um, manipulation or I say manipulation change in um, what is going to actually aim at it'll be the, the most simplistic aiming process we can think of um, but you know it would work then what we're gonna do is put a control block on top so we put a control block on now on here we can say um, if um, so this one we d we don't want to fire if we are let's say um, we're gonna have it slight overlap let's say below 200 meters I think we'll have to be the uh, level we go for I'm just looking at the uh, the minimum height uh, times etc so that, uh, we just said it so it's set to this for the moment so when the, the we need two anyway so when the altitude is less than minus 200 just go ahead nicely there we are going to um, AI mainframe turn off effective range one block uh, yeah might as well do it straight away there's, there's no real um, problem with that so straight away it's going to turn off this mainframe as soon as we go below 200 um, what we also need to put in is the reverse turn it back on again so um, if when altitude is greater than minus 200 there we go AI mainframe turn it back on again now we don't need to combat on here uh, we only need on and off um, we just go we're gonna set that at 2 because it, it's always sometimes a bit weird with diagonal so we'll set that at 2 um, yeah so that should work quite nicely there that will basically aim at them now I'm going to change one little thing on here on this missile system having a having a think as I go along because um, we're generally going to be under the, under the the water here uh, I a lot lower than what we are aiming at so we have two options with the missiles one and I'll go for the missiles in a second one is infrared uh, which means it's a fire and forget or we could go for laser guided hmm. there's pluses and minuses of both systems um, uh, or we could even mix that's an even better one in that half your missiles are infrared and half your missiles are um, uh, laser guided you don't have to have all your missiles the same type on a particular block and that might be what I'm gonna do actually that could be quite good fun hmm. yeah we'll, we'll 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 go with that one half and half for shits and giggles why not okay so that's going to be the basis and i'll copy that into each of these missile systems and set their control blocks just to have a slightly different um scaling um, what we're going to have the other side is going to be surface vessels so um, we're going to need a system against the surface vessels now this is going to be a lot simpler I'm thinking again missiles I'm thinking just torpedoes though if something's below the 20 meters so it's on the surface you know between let's say five meters we'll, we'll, we'll give it a five meter sort of range we can just fire torpedoes at it Put all our ammo production at firing crap loads of torpedoes at them and I've got a hankering for two types of torpedoes um, maybe just one type I just got to think this through and whether that changes what I've done with these and what I do with the vessel I'm thinking some noodle stick with torpedoes with lots 
of explosives. Why not? They're going to be expensive to use. We might have a few, like four or five block torpedoes, um, but I feel like making some torpedoes which have stupid amounts of fragmentation and um, explosive warheads just because I can, not because they're effective. Um, it sounds like a bit of a laugh. In actual fact, I've got an even better idea. I've got, or not better idea, but another alternative idea. And I'm gonna use the aiming time option for that's now available on the missiles. And I'm gonna go with something, uh, let's see how, I'm gonna see if this will work. Now I need to potentially bulge out um, a pity I can't have these awkwardly. Uh, what, what I'm going to try and do is make them bounce. So basically the warheads won't activate for say 10 seconds. So when we fire them they'll be able to hit the side of the vessel and then go off on their particular target and then 10 seconds later. So this initial bouncing, I, we tried this on the Leviathan in the previous season once and I find when I tried to make the tip out automatically and we found it um, was setting off the uh, missiles straight away um, so under yeah I'm gonna try a few things I might move where this is so we're gonna put a missile a bit of a gap and then a uh, a uh, a block to make it push outwards um, is it effective most probably not um, will it look funny Yes, and it's so therefore it's worth doing. So, and to eight. so about here, I want my uh, missile blocks, and we're going to go up about five. Yes, something like that on each side. I've obviously turned off my mirror line now. Something in that particular vein. I'll take out this AI just for the moment. Right, we'll, we'll join these together. So they're joined up, there we go. Now we will uh, launch pads. And I'll put my mirror line on now because it's going to get boring doing this multiple times. And then we're going to put in our uh, missile blocks. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, this is gonna look weird, but I um I'm liking the idea of it so far. As I say, for uh, no apparent reason other than I haven't tried it. Oh, actually, in fact, I could bring it in here. No, I don't have to widen that out there. What am I doing? I can uh, uh, redesign. Redesign. Time to change. Right, um, we're going to put them in here. So if I get those, oops, I need to obviously here. One, two, three, four, five. I could still end up blowing myself up. That is still a very good possibility. As I say, this is a, a, a totally will it work type of concept rather than anything else. And I'm not 100% certain that it will. <laughs> but hey ho, that's part of the fun of this game. Finding out what will all work. I do hope it'll actually fit out of this. Um, so now we um, will do the same up on here. I'll just fill in this, this bottom row with my idea so you can see the concept. And uh, and then I will flesh it out and we'll see if it actually works. Or whether I um, this is gonna be one massive fail, um, which is potential. But if you don't try these things, you will never know. 
put another one there. So now what we do is we put our blocks and metal slope two meter. like this and that's also going to be up there so that will basically go up in that sort of way rightio so this will fire go against this and be forced outwards out this way and then go on its target using a one turn Effective? Uh, uh, efficient? No. Fun to watch? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> these will be. Uh, uh, these are going to be special torpedoes. These are going to be for um, special torpedoes for deep sea, other deep sea vessels. So uh, they're like a local protection. Uh, okay. So that's that one which I need to flesh out and see if that will work. This is sort of set our height. We can be about this height. This centre section I may make a little higher. So from this point it might just curve up a little higher at this point and then come back down. Um, our engine will need to be back here. So we're going to end up having to put our AIs in this section just here. And then our engine. Um, obviously we're doing this long thin design so our engine will have to be a long thin design as well which is not unfortunately isn't very efficient um, generally um, I think I'm gonna have to make it the back end of this a little uh, wider maybe a little longer as well so if we uh, do the usual AI AI mainframe give ourselves about four to about there then just to no a little one more one more one more about there uh, for the other I need to put controllers and maybe some bits and pieces in there take out the here other bits for the AI controller and uh, uh, actually, I, haven't, I don't know if you can put one of these things on the top. I haven't tried it, so let's not worry about it for the moment. Right, and naval AI. Oh, something I'm going to do in a different um, segment will be about trying to use an aerial navigation under the water. But that will be a, a lab and a test some, at some other point. Um, don't need anything else at this time patrols and other ones are useful but um, I haven't really found patrol ones so far to be uh, that useful the aim point selection is very good and the, again tracker target tracker association not been useful so far okay let's um, not worry about that so we give that we give a uh, another four and then we are looking at engine now uh, engines, engine block. Uh, then do a little bit more about there, because we'll need a here. We're going to need a chair. Let's put my chair in. Chair. We'll need a vehicle control, and then we're going to have crap loads of control blocks, and this will be fairly well armoured. So, uh, yep. Then we'll have some blocks behind it, metal blocks about here yes um, uh, protecting the back before we get it to the engine and then in the engine we're going to have all of our other little bits and pieces so we've got quite a good system so far we'll just see how far we what how engines work when they're slim it might be that I actually produce multiple engines but we'll have a look at that. Uh, one, two. Right, so for the engines, we have a choice. Uh, we can either, just to show the basic concepts, do this single cylinder 
and then carburetors all round and we might just compare the two so that's one way of doing it um, like that and then get some superchargers in there um, oops I forgot to put the mirror line on again haven't I there we go thank you uh, and then put some fuel tanks on the other bits now the fuel tanks might stick out a little bit but I don't think they're explosive so they may well be okay and height wise it's going to be close but not really at the top and that gives us about a height of 800 which would be, en be enough so 800 not bad the other way we could do it is oops come on can't make sure it stops there we go right is cylinders um like this so four cylinders like that so as an example then put my carburetors but the only problem is now we're starting to get close to sticking out of the the vessel i've either not got to put something on there or i've suddenly made it wider again which i don't like the idea of personally um i'd, I'd rather not do that um yeah i think we'll We'll have it that's going to be our width i think we'll have to go with this design and just go for very long i can't see any way of making that more efficient on that design um there's no point in putting it sideways that sort of single crank seems to be the most efficient way of doing it so we'll continue that on uh maybe there oops no that's there there. Come on. And I'll fill in that engine. Okay. So that's the basic concept design. We'll put a keel on it. Um, we will uh, fill in these sides. Uh, we need to get a good bit of power. We're going to need some shielding, but most of the shielding will be facing the top with some at a 45 degrees angle here because most of our shots. I'm guessing we're not going to get shots coming at us at this angle. Most shots are going to be coming in at about this sort of angle into the ship. Um, you know, because it's going to be so high, it's coming in like this. Yeah, even when we're broadside on, we're going to be shooting. Because also our AI for naval is going to make us go almost directly underneath the enemy each time due to the sheer distance. So most of our shielding can be on the top of the ship and covering the side so yeah this will be this won't be the biggest uh, DSV this is just my first DSV uh, as a concept we this is very uh, all right so I suppose it's sort of cruiser level destroyer cruiser level um, I have I'll make a, a pure hunter and uh, I may do a, a much bigger vessel which is well basically bigger um, more missiles more everything but I just want to test the concept of these torpedoes and the other systems so I'll see you back once I have fleshed out the basic concept of this ship
and welcome back. Uh, it's taken a while to build this ship, uh, but hopefully that uh, showed how it was done. I need to add the shields here. That's not completed, but it is now under the water, currently 179 meters, and trying to. Um, it's avoiding the mountains reasonably well. Speed under the water is quite fast actually, 9.2 meters per second. Um, obviously the uh, thin shape to it is uh, very beneficial uh, for its overall performance, which is uh, great to see as well. Um, what we will now have to do is give the weapons a bit of a test. Because that's one area which has not been properly tested at this moment. So we have uh, these torpedoes. The the bouncing it off a block just did not seem to work. I, uh, certainly with such a long missile, I could not get that to work um, effectively. Pity, really. Um, that, that That's really a pity. Now, um, unfortunately, these the, the, the water here is not as deep as I would like. It's only 18 meters deep. Uh, but that's good because it shows that it is able to navigate in these uh, uh, less deep waters. So what we're going to do now is just do some simple weapons testing. I'm not going to test every single little bit. Um, we will just do some basic uh, weapon setup. So um, I'm just going to show the the core uh, setup that needed for the weapons that I've found works quite well. So these, this first set of missiles will go to down to 150 meters. And what I've found is effective is to first of all put a propeller on, then your short range thruster. Uh, we'll have a couple of fins on this, because uh, they'll be for air targets pr primarily. Uh, uh, fuel tanks, and then we're going to need um, on some of them they're going to be laser guarded and some of them to be um, infrared. So on the laser guided ones we won't need to put a one turn in. So we can uh, put a fragmentation in, have that have a reasonable angle. And um, we've got a choice, we can either put more warheads in or what I'm going to do is put a proximity in. So these will be proximity um, warheads. Now, uh, the, this is the important bit, the thruster. Now this is going to work at up to 50. So I don't want it too light. I, the ideal is about six seconds. Uh, but if I was on the surface, that would potentially land on me. So I'm going to put it at four seconds for this moment and we'll see how that goes with that I think that'll be fine now I'm gonna do a, um, a site I'm gonna save this actually uh, sign to all and then save this as um, what should we call this uh, DSV uh, missile save now the only difference is I'm gonna go over here and these four we will change to be an infrared where are we infrared a explosive warhead because it's going to be a not it's going to be contact only um well we might change that actually but uh we'll, we'll see and uh a one turn so that way we will have A little uh, an option at both now these won't be that long a range they've only got three fuel tanks which is uh, the problem part as such for this type of uh, missile Ooh, have I just did I not change the I didn't change the infrared explosive and where are we want it Excellent. So they're set up on like that uh, with that particular setup. Now this second setup will be down to 250 meters. Now what we'll do is we'll load up that DSV uh, torp missile. Load that. Edit it. Assign to all. 
Uh, now, it's the ideal at 250 is about for this setup is about 11 seconds. Uh, but at, but at lower levels it would stop working. So I'm going to set this about seven seconds. So at 250 meters it will be as effective as I would like. It'll be a little bit short on its range. Uh, we'll also not put as many fins on, but more fuel. Um, so that will be the default setup for this one. So not quite as agile. Um, but slightly longer range once it gets to the, the surface surface and the pro with the proximities it isn't too bad a problem and then we'll do the same again on this side we will put our infrared our explosive and our one turn and I might yeah yeah we'll get, leave it like that um, one turn explosive infrared One turn, explosive, infrared. And one more time. One turn, explosive, infrared. Our ship's quite happily navigating around at the moment. We're at minus 134 meters. Um, it's doing quite well. Right, the final set of missiles. Now, um, these were up to 250 now i've got actually a cankering to try and make these a little bigger um hmm. but that obviously is no actually we won't do that we won't do that for the moment let's just get them working i might do that as a as a future um option have a look at that right sign to all now first thing is the the weapon to 300 meters is about a 16 second um, delay is required and then we want this to run close to that I'm gonna have this at 200 meters it's 9 to 16 so um, we're gonna have this at that range so I'm gonna set this at 11 so this will be effective from 250 to 300 meters uh, again, we're going to put just the one and uh, we'll sign this to all. Oops, yep, I think that should be fine. Sign to all. And then we'll change the rear ones again to. And I, I'm not going to do infrared on these ones, I think. I'll, no, no, we'll, we'll continue with the, the basic promise premise we have done so far. Um, and we'll see how that works for it. Where are we? Infrared. One turn. Explosive. Infrared. One turn. Explosive. Infrared. Okay, so these should cover air targets. And uh, we can sort out the ranges exactly later. Right, some one interesting one. Let's have a look at our big, nice big torps. These 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 are uh, monsters here and I haven't actually put any controllers in here for that hang on a second I totally forgot about that uh, da -da -da -da. right uh, where are we uh, control panel there we go and we will need an identify friend and foe and we will need a stagger set at quite a substantial there we go and we need a controller now we can put this on the uh, basic server doesn't need to be uh, separated really uh, well, so we'll just give it a uh, wireless receiver there we go now this the only difference is this will be ground only uh, so maximum altitude will be about three meters about two, so because some AIs, I'm saying that fine. Some AIs are above the waterline. Uh, minimum, there will be a minimum range. Don't try and fire at things less than 200. And maximum range will be significant. So we're just going to set it up about 1,200, 
don't know, aim for a reasonable range on this. There we go. Uh, and also uh, fairly large targets. I want to shoot at small little targets. There we go. Yes, that should be good. Okay, now let's set up what, what these are going to be. These great big noodle sticks, uh, as I call them. Right, so they will be infrared. Infrared. Uh, they will... Um, we'll start at the rear. Then they need about... Uh, four torpedoes. Three fins and uh, a torpedo, a fuel tank for each propeller. Should give it a range of about a thousand. We'll, we'll see. Uh, we might need some more. Let's just put another fin in and another fuel tank and a one turn. So that's our initial uh, build there done. Now we will need uh, somewhere like here. Uh, we can put a camera in here for the infrared seeker and set it to do, instead of center of mass, uh, we'll go at... Um, random blocks. Now, I, there's no particular things, but we're just going to set it to random. Uh, what else would we need? Let's see. Uh, we'll try a target precision. And we will also set a proximity fuse. Right, the rest of it is explosives. Well, many explosives. Uh, for about five explosives, let's see how that does. Oh no, we'll make it six. And then uh, fragments. We'll have a armor piercing fragment, then uh, about 10 degree, and then for if it does get inside about 30 degree now there's a couple of things I've forgotten on here I'm going to have to change that I've just realized I've missed a couple of things out so we'll start here we need ballast tanks and a regulator so uh, and then we'll put it so we'll try ballast tanks just a little bit below the surface and the regulator because it will take a while to get there all right let's assign them all and then final weapon is the missiles at these at the front. Now these are going to be designed for um, attacking other deep sea vessels based upon uh, previ my previous uh, experience um, with these type of missiles. So infrared, um, whoops, don't need quite so many. I think that should be enough. One, two, uh, just need two fuel tanks, a one turn, might only need actually one fuel tank, uh, we'll give it two though for the moment, um, don't need any of those, we need uh, on the front uh, an explosive, we'll put a proximity in here as well, it's very handy for this type of head system, and where's our fragment, now that's a little I think I might need a little bit more um, like 60 degrees so it, it, even if the uh, fragment it will get some so I think we might need another propeller actually on there so I'm going to go to five propellers okay that's approximately right it looks about three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen Sixteen, so we need about eight. Sixteen, need about twelve in there. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, actually, I think I need a bit more on this. Uh, five, and change one of those for a fuel tank. Okay, that will do for the moment. We'll, we'll, I will uh, have a m test and muck around with that later. How's our ship doing? We're, oh, we've, we are, we're in a fairly high area, so. Right, we will try to find a slightly deeper section of sea. It looks like that there over there is deep, but uh, we will go over to where uh, it looks, looks reasonably deep. Um, let's try over here, see what the uh, water is like over in this particular area, see if it will navigate to there. Which way is it going at the moment? It's going that way. Hopefully it will navigate its way over in that direction. 
So, okay, that's the um, arming done. Um, what I'm going to now do is just a quick test of the... Uh, see how it does against particular items. So at the moment, because of our range, our depth, we should only get the front and the torpedoes going. So let's just bring in something simple. Um, like a duster, which actually won't give us much of a problem. No mainframe connected. No mainframe. I've forgotten to put a transmitter. Oops. On the mainframe. It's silly little things like that. Silly little things. Okay, let's put a transmitter up here. We need to put a transmitter. There we go. So now, this should now point at the target. And we have the torpedoes are firing at a, a target that's out of the water because I haven't obviously set up this uh, targeting here yet. Let's go and have a look. Uh, potentially this has not been set up correctly. Um, let's go and have a quick check. Uh, yes, this hasn't been set up, so we need to say uh, maximum of 1,000 and uh, maximum height is actually going to be about 2 metres. Again, it will, will attack items um, there if needed. Right, so what else is or isn't able to fire? Let's have a look at this. See if we have anything with this mainframe. Connected to a, it's, sorry, it's connected to a mainframe. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Okay. Um, 20 um, is okay with that. Okay with that. Uh, minimum altitude is fine. No limit on that. No limit, no limit, no limit. Um, it's not firing at our target though, uh, unfortunately. Uh, why would that be? Had this before. Um, on these weapons. So, okay, I will have a quick look at these weapons and come back when they are ready and firing. Welcome back. The uh, weapons have just been sorted out properly now, finally. As you can see, it is quite happily taking out air targets now. Um, the, um, I've sorted out the missiles in general, so at certain heights, like here we've just hit a height where two missile systems have cut in to uh, be effective. Uh, one's just gone out again, it's just sort of in and out again on uh, due to the height and uh, doing quite nicely. Uh, the middle height, the middle system is a little finicky um, and I may, tr I think it'd be worth cutting it down to just a two um, 
system. It's due to the control blocks, the way the control blocks work. It's difficult to, to say only pass at the limit. It constantly keeps trying to uh, change it. I turn the, the, the uh, AIs on. But it is being effective, which is uh, great news. Now the next thing to try is a ship. So we just put in the good old Marauder. Oh, it's a little close, that Marauder. What range are we at? We are at minus 100. It's still doing quite good. I haven't put the shields in, as you can see. Uh, I'll do that before I put it up anywhere. But uh, it's being effective. The missiles are work going into the air and being effective. As you can see, they are. Oops, some of them are not going into the air, um, being effective. Uh, maybe because the, uh, as I said, there is this middle group where it keeps on turning the uh, laser off on it, unfortunately. Um, and it turns it on for a while, then off again. Uh, it's not as effective as I would like. So that's the laser ones. Um, so the laser missiles will just go off on a, tra a ballistic trajectory. But the. Um, radar ones will with their one turns will still work in that situation um, I'm okay with that that's not it's a it's a problem but not a, a massive problem so that's already been effective on there okay anyway a little bit of work I'll put this up on the steam workshop once I put some shields on there and uh, people can play with it and take it a little further uh, as I say, I think the the middle weapon system needs a bit of work, um, generally. Um, but otherwise, this is working as a, a deep sea uh, vessel, deep sea submarine. So designed for deep water um, engagements. Um, hopefully, this has been a, of help to people, and they have. Uh, you've enjoyed it. Um, please click the like and leave any comments about about this ship or any any other little uh, builds you think would be interesting for me to have a look at because I do like working on these slightly more interesting builds rather than the, the defaults um, so let me know in the comments but until next time have fun <laughs>